fight hype here. We're one of the top super middleweight contenders. Well, new super middleweight. Right. You moved down yes. from 175. Yep. So, Lionel Thompson. Yes. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to have you on Ishe's card on May 11th, but. Uh, so you're always staying in the gym, getting ready for opportunities. Is Absolutely. That right? Absolutely. Like you got to stay ready. Like um, in boxing, they pick who they want to be stars. It's like, it's like, it's like basketball. You you got to get recruited. You can be good. Like there's other basketball players out there that's good, but they ain't the chosen one. So you know they got to go a, a more difficult route. And that's the situation I've been in my whole career. Like you know I'm so good that my first promoter was like, yo, you're so good that. Guy, you don't want too much money to fight you, or you don't want to fight. And top contenders, they uh, they second guessing it, so you gonna have a hard career. So, you know, um, with that being said, I stay in the gym and just perfect my skills. Through all the politics and the business, one thing I know for sure is that you gotta be able to fight. Politics only can take you but so far. When it comes get down to the get down, the crossover, you gotta be able to fight, and that's what I'm banking on in my career. I'm not really. Based on politics, I'm just basing it on these. Now, you know, fans are always, whenever a guy's struggling to get fights in the fans, yeah. the fans' first thing they'll say is, be active. You know, fight who is there. Uh, but it's not that easy. Yeah, sometimes the fans make it seem like it's like, oh, just stay active. Like, oh, yeah, thank you. I will. I'll fight tomorrow. Like, it's, it's not that. You got promoters, you got managers, advising their fighters. Don't take this fight. Don't take that fight. And then you, boxing's a small world. So when you can fight real good, the world gets around. Right. Stay away from this guy. Stay away from that guy. Stay away from this guy. So it's like, it's hard to stay active because you got certain guys that don't want to fight you. And then what they do is, to ruin you, they sit you out for three years and then call you for an extremely big fight. You know what I'm saying? When you ain't, you know what I'm saying? Then when you get beat, they make the other guy seem like the beast and say, oh, he's not good. I am good, it's just that the, the situation at hand, you know what I mean? You get one guy that's active, that's really good. Another guy that's really good but not active, you know, it's, 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 it's just not um, good if you're trying to be successful. Yeah, and, and a lot of time it happens on, on short notice. Right. And while you were talking about it, it did remind me of the fight on Saturday, Marta Rosen and Triple G. It, it, yep. Now, 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 Triple G, uh, I, I, my Rosen is a, a, a good fighter. Triple G been active. Just went to 12 hard rounds with Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Been in there with the better competition. You know what I'm saying? So boxing, it, it's it's, it's, it's bonds has got to move up. Yeah. Weeks notice. Right. It, it sucks. Like even like, speaking for myself, not for a couple that was, it was on a two weeks notice. A two weeks notice. I, I was out for two years. You know what I'm saying? Then, but if you look at what I did after Kovalev, the guys I beat after Kovalev when I was active, guys that's not as good as Kovalev, but right under Kovalev, and not just I destroyed them. The, the guy, the, um, I just beat two undefeated guys back to back with a year layoff. Two out guys. You know, Steve Lovett. I destroyed him. Then I set out for 11 months. And then they tried to put me in there with a, another big undefeated guy and right. destroy him. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I stay in the gym, you know. I stay in the gym to prove people wrong. Now, is, uh, you did mention Kovalev. We were talking before the camera yeah. about Kovalev. And, I, and it was in, just interesting how you were breaking down why he is and was a top fighter. Can yeah. you talk to the fans about that, what made Kovalev yeah. good? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, people say Kovalev's really good. Uh, like, I, I, I'm, I'm honest with myself. I'm not going to sit up here and say if I was active, I would have beat him. That early in my career, I still think I would have lost the fight. But I don't think I would have got stopped. Right. I think I, I, I gave a much better fight. But you know, but Kovalev is for real. He he's for real. Like everybody's gonna all he's flat footed, he's this, he's that, but okay. Only one who beat him is war. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the first one, war lost. They can say if they want, but war lost the first one. War came back and did what he did the second time, but they're gonna show you how good he keep his range good. And he was beating Ward on the scorecard in the second fight. So that shows he can box. He was out boxing one of the best pound for pound fighters on the planet. Right, because we know about the power, but you were even mentioning like he Still, can box. He can box. Good, good jab, yeah. keep his range good, good feet, good timing, experience, tough, know how to finish guys. He's for real. Is he still the top man of 75? Because you got Badu Jack, he trains here. He, he's yeah. he's going to be fighting Adonis, uh, Dimitri Bivol. So at 34, is he still top man? or At 75? Um, no, I think Akta Baturbiev is. Peter B. Oh, Bebe. better be your guess like, is as good as mine how you say it, right? Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's, like, that's like a, a brother of mine. And um, I sparred with him a few times, and that's by far the worst thing I've ever experienced in life. I've been hit by a car once when I was young, and that's how I feel like sparring with him. Like, it's, I'm just being honest. Like, I don't see nobody at 75 beating him. People can say what they want about, he's this, he's that. 
It's easy to say until you get in the ring and you get hit with the nose. He's the top. I think he's. I think he'll knock Kovalev. I think he'll knock Vivo off. I, think he, I don't think nobody's gonna fight him at, at this weight. I just don't. I don't think Kovalev. Won't, I don't think nobody. If they have to pick an easier route, they're gonna go the easier route because he's death. I'm surprised this because everyone loves Bivol right now. They love the Russian, the yeah. Russian kid Bivol. And Bivol, he can fight, but right. he can't beat Arthur. He can stop under five lines. Now, now, what's it going to mean for you not having to fight these monsters at 75? Because you're a pretty average sized guy. You yeah. look like more of a middleweight than yeah. a light heavyweight. Yeah. So, so what's it going to mean for you going to 68? Oh, it's going to mean it's going to mean the world. I, I think I'll be a star at 68. Look what I did at 75. All the guys that I beat, I destroyed good guys at 75 with, with no protection. Just fighting on two, three weeks notice, month notices, and destroying good guys. Like guys that had a bright future, everybody thought was going to be. And here come my little self, and then show them there's no competition. Yes, I think at 68, I don't think nobody's going to be strong enough to keep me off. Like, And then with the skills and the boxing, I mean, I, 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 I done boxed world champions. I box world champions for middleweights. Easy. Like, you know, so I think at 68 with them little gloves on, I'm going to have a lot of knockouts. That would be extremely hard to beat. Who impresses you at 68? You got Benavidez, Ramirez, um, Caleb Plant trains here. Yep, you know, um, yeah. the two who impress me who I would love to match up with one day at 68 is the kid. David Benavidez is really good. I would, I would love to share the ring with him one day. In the near future, I would love to fight um, Ramirez. I would actually love to get that fight. He's really good. I like to test myself against the best. Like, he, he's, he's for real, man. He's, he's tough. I would love to match up with him in a big fight at 68. I, I know I can get him, but I, I, I would just love to, to fight him. I, I, I would love to fight him. All right, man. Hey, thanks a lot, Lionel, for your oh, time. Thank you, man. man. Thank you. I don't, I don't, my voice don't get heard a lot, so I thank you, man. Well, it's, it, and this ain't really a question, but it's more yeah. like a, a statement to close this. Like, um, sometimes the fans don't always know the top fighters, the top contenders. Right. But you were saying you don't get fights because in the gyms they know. The oh, yeah. trainers they know. Oh, yeah. the, the managers they know who's good and who's oh, yeah. not. The promoters, they, like, like, they, they can say what they want, but they know what's up. And that's the kind of fighter you are, right? Yeah, like, yeah they know. So I fight whoever. Right. Like, you really don't. Now I got to get paid. I haven't been. I paid my dues. I think I deserve to make some money now. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know if they want to take that risk, man, against a talented uh, yeah. guy who knows how to really box and move the ring. Yeah, you know? I'm, 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 I'm sharpening my razor. And it's like, like I said, get to God be the glory. You know, I, I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for bringing me thus far. God be the glory. And I'm just staying ready. And when he opened the door for me, when he do his part, open the door for me, make sure I can, I'm prepared to just walk through it. Thank but you. I will be, I will have a belt. I will be super middleweight champion of the world. Thank you, man. Appreciate your time. Thank you, man.